Hi friends, welcome. We're so glad that you can join us together as a church family. It is great to have you here. And what we want to do is have a discussion together and about, about a topic that I think is important for everybody, whether you actually know it or not. 15 months, three lockdowns, and we're still there. Everybody else isn't, and we are. And that has a cumulative effect on us. And we know that emotionally and mentally, there's a huge challenge and stresses that we have in our life. And we've actually been talking about this for a while. And we thought we want to get in that place where we can talk together, have a conversation, and include you in this conversation, and really begin to talk about what does hope look like? What does health look like? What are the ways that we can help each other? And that's really what this is about. So we're going to take some time. I'm going to introduce these other esteemed people that are here together and we're going to talk about that and and how Jesus is important in this that's probably the most important thing uh, Tim you recognize Tim Ham Tim is here and uh, he's doing his usual thing putting things on the chat and getting questions for us and anything they want they can throw out right yeah we're uh, if you've seen the exchange before um, my job is similar to what we do on the exchange I am watching the chat so as the discussion unfolds tonight if you have questions make sure you jump in the chat ask those questions I'll see them and I'll ask them of our panel here today if you're watching us on Facebook live or YouTube live make sure you jump on over to church of the rock dot live that's the chat that we're watching that's where you can ask your questions don't wait till the end or don't wait for a Q&A time just throw them out there, I'll grab them, and I'll interject them as we uh, have our discussion here today. Perfect. We'd really, really like to hear from you. That would be so good. We're putting some interactive pieces in here, and even if you don't have a question, just participate in that part. That would be great. Uh, Nancy Braun is with us, and Nancy, you've been at Church Rock 15 years, do I yes. have that right? Yeah. As on years. staff, she has a, a history of uh, working in the social area and is uh, the Celebrate Recovery Coordinator and actually for a regional rep for the area as well. And Nancy, it's so good to have you here and, and looking forward to hearing perspective, especially coming out of Celebrate Recovery and all the things that, it, that you folks do in there. Celebrate Recovery is absolutely golden. We love that ministry. And Nance, welcome. Thank you so much. All right. Matt Povey is is our other uh, guest speaker how do you like that, that we have? <laughs> thanks yeah just Appreciate i want to put some pressure on him oh yeah because you know, he's because he's a youth pastor and youth pastors have this reputation of being kind of slackers right yep. but so anyway uh <laughs> matt is is somebody that you have seen doing announcements and when he does his ministry time you can tell the depth of who he is and he really loves jesus and uh he's got that heart and and somebody who really understands this topic and had some really personal things matt i know that you that you've gone through and worked with so welcome here, Matt. Thanks. And, and you know, you you have some events coming in the f near future that, oh, that also I, could be helpful for you, right? Yes. That, mm -hmm. I, I, I was gonna I was gonna say so. Is is getting married? Is wedding? Is that a, 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 a kind of taking you down in your mental energy? Or <laughs> three, I won't even go there. <laughs> we'll just let. <laughs> I wasn't even expecting that, but uh, yeah, I you're welcome. I should have. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, you know what, friends, as, as we kind of begin to unpack this, um, w what we've done is we've sort of created a bit of an umbrella ministry called Serenity. And we've said, hey, listen, we, we thought that that name put into focus a little bit some of the ways that we feel as that God has given us the ability to walk in that. And a lot of this is journey. It's what we're shooting for. And we want to try really hard not to do religious cliches or smack you with the Bible or, you know, do those things that sometimes can be unhelpful when we're struggling. And all of us are struggling. It's just a reality. That cumulative piece that we've experienced has sort of caught up with all of us. You're going to hear some of our stories in this. And so we've really created this focus for all of Church of the Rock to say, what does serenity look like? And I'm going to ask these guys and, and online, if you guys want to say, when you think of serenity, what kind of comes to mind for you? Nancy, what, what pictures, what thoughts? Well, another word that probably a lot of us use is peace of mind. Okay. You know, that I, I feel like I can have serenity when everything around me is kind of chaos. But somewhere in me, I realize that because of God, you know, I can do this. It's going to be okay. Nice. But it can be hard some days to find that. Oh, yeah. 
Good. Matt, what's the first picture yeah. that comes to mind for you? I'll give you a, a youth uh, a picture first nice. and then just a normal picture next. <laughs> uh, what I think it's not is if you ever watch Kung Fu Panda, okay. there's uh, Master Sifu says, inner peace, inner peace, mm. as sort of as like this mantra to essentially just to grind through oh, whatever's okay. happening, yeah. which is, it, that's not it, mm -hmm. right? right. Uh, it's that's not just thought. telling yourself everything will be fine. I have inner peace. Right. Um, there's there's something deeper uh, that God wants to do in us. So when I was thinking about that today, as you were mentioning it to us, I was thinking, you know, in in the movies, it's really interesting when you see a storm, um, you know, on the sea, and then someone dropping into the into the the water. You have this really interesting juxtaposition of the person who's sort of surrounded by water, but almost safe, but recognizing that there's turmoil above them. Okay. And that's how I feel it. It's like, okay, I know that there's turmoil around me, but the depth that I am in Jesus gives me this sense of I can, I can be okay where I am in the midst of, of turmoil. Good. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and you know, folks, that's the place where we, we want to shoot for, we want to get. And, and even as you hear us describing these things, you might think, boy, I am nowhere there, right? And that's okay. Like, we really want to get to that place where we realize we're all on a journey. That's where we're going. This is possible. That's the whole part that, that I think you have. There is something that God can give us that nobody else can give us. And that's really what we want to focus Let on. Let me tell you what people said about hey, serenity right in the chat. We have lots of peace, contentment, clarity. Uh, someone said internal lack of turmoil, like exactly oh, wow. what you were saying. Uh, someone said Seinfeld, serenity now. <laughs> I don't know if that's a quote or something. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, lots of contentment, clarity, peace. Good. What people are saying. So. Good. And, and so that's the focus that we're going. Here, here's one of the ways that this really kind of um, connected for me. My dad struggled probably all his adult life with depression, and it was really significant. And some of the, the ways in which they tried to bring help to him were, were absolutely horrible. And uh, he had God, and he experienced exactly some of those things and moments and times. But it was a huge struggle growing up. Mm. I just seeing my dad go through this when you're young, you don't necessarily get it all right. And uh, as you're older, I look back on this and it's just amazing who Jesus was to him and how he just hung on. And sometimes that's all he did was just hang on to Jesus because that's all he could do. At, at the end of it, and now that he's gone on and he's he is completely healed, right? Because mm. everything does get healed. If you're a believer, right, you know that. Right. And that's a huge hope for us. I, I look back at that, and one of the things that I'm incredibly sad about is that his church family, and he was he had a really great church family. People loved each other, they cared about each other, and his extended family, not his immediate, but his extended family, were, weren't able to actually be a help to him because there just wasn't um, a culture or an atmosphere where people could talk about this or where it was okay to struggle, or maybe you're a bad Christian, if you're depressed or, or something like that. And I think probably that's one of the things that I'm most sad about for my father is that he, he accessed God, which is great, but God's actually put us in a family and we're supposed to get that from each other. And so that's part of what we wanna just help with today is to say, and you're gonna hear some of our stories and say, you know what, it's okay to be in that place where you struggle and work through, there, there's hope, there are all those things, but we actually need each other and we need to create a place and a safe place and an atmosphere and a culture where we can actually do this in a way so we can have all access to all of the resources that God has for us. And uh, we are there for each other. All all those encouragement, build up, all those things that we can do. So hopefully that's going to be part of what you're going to get today. And today is just the start. We have a whole uh, uh, series of things that we have planned that I hope you're going to appreciate and, and encourage. Nancy, why don't you take, when we start with you, why don't you take a few minutes and talk about kind of what all of this has looked like for you in the pandemic and some of the ways that, that you've kind of worked your way through it or are working your way through it. 
Yeah, I think to say that I am working through it is definitely right. Uh, you know, I'm just so glad that we're starting this conversation and um, starting this conversation looking at mental health because there is a lot of stigma around mental health, a lot of things that people don't understand. And so, uh, you know, I'm also expecting that our viewer audience is going to continue to contribute on the chat because we really want to bring this news to you. We really want to begin this conversation with you because we have it here. And so we want to um, extend it uh, to more people. Um, you know, when we think about mental health, it's really uh, an, a confusing term. What is mental health? And so uh, my working definition of mental health is that it includes uh, your, your psychological portions, your, your thinking, it includes your emotions, and it even includes your social interactions because all of those things uh, work together. And if one of them isn't great, it's probably going to impact the others. Uh, mental health can often be identified as are you experiencing stress? Are you experiencing uh, anxiety? Uh, are you um, obsessing? Or I, I know for me, when I begin obsessing with certain thoughts or replaying conversations and stuff, those to me are indicators that my mental health is, you know, warbling a little bit. So I think it's really important that we begin uh, taking a look at this uh, and finding out because um, our mental health determines how we're going to cope with life. And this year we've had so much mm. to cope with. And I'm going to get into that in a few seconds. Um, and it's also going to look at, you know, how our... Uh, how are those coping mechanisms going to impact us even moving forward? And so... Okay. So now you didn't talk necessarily... So it isn't necessarily about having a diagnosis of something. Well, that's an illness, right? So that's a mental explain illness. Explain the difference this between is, those things. Yeah. You know, um, mental illness is real. Mental illness requires a doctor. Uh, mental illness requires medicine. If a doctor prescribes medicine, please take it. That is not what we're discussing here. We are talking a lot of the really things good. about just as we walk through day-to-day -day life, stuff happens. Um, an event happens, small or large, which triggers a thought, which triggers feelings. Uh, sometimes it triggers uh, an experience in the background. So um, a lot of my journey has been, you know, something happens and I become suspicious of somebody and I begin to tell, telling stories and then I start obsessing and then I start thinking, well, they are a bad person. And then I start talking about how they're a bad. Like, so you can just see okay. how one incident um, triggers my mental health. Okay. And, and so that's the big difference. I'm not going to be talking about mental illness tonight. Right, and I, I think it's important for us to say that we're talking about the body of Christ, how we do this together. We're, none of us are counselors or psychologists. Right. We are, are, are the, the church leaders who are saying, hey guys, let's do this together. Yeah. Love that. Thanks, Nance. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, you know, Jesus was about mental health. Mm -hmm. Jesus talked about peace. He came to give us peace. Um, one of the phrases that, that I found very beneficial over this last year was, uh, not only does Jesus... Uh, make life better, but Jesus makes us better at life. And so I think that, um, you know, when I think about this last year, I would consider myself to be a person of strong mind, mm -hmm. um, you know, not prone to getting uh, washed uh, away with my emotions. Um, I think that in my years with Celebrate Recovery, I've really been able to work through uh, some of the things that, that became, became problematic in my relationships. Um, but most of the time, people know me as being honest, forward, you know, strong. Um, but this year has been so uh, difficult for me. And I'm really happy to, to, to share uh, my story because one of the things that I find happens is when people are beginning to struggle, they think everybody else is fine. Right. And we're the only one. Um, and and I, I, I want you to hear this. You are not the only one. I was one. I am one. I'm still on this journey. Um, and, and so that's why we want to open this conversation today. Um, because here at the church, we can't pretend like we're perfect. We can't pretend like we've got it all aced. Uh, if you think you've got this aced, well then, 
I don't know how to relate to you. Uh, you know, like I was I, wondering how you were going to finish that sentence. Right? Like, I, I just don't know how to relate to you. I, I think that every day I get a call and, you know, people are, are telling me, you know, um, this is what's going on. Uh, recently, even some of the strong people that I know, they're like, man, I've got no motivation. Right. I'm That's like, big. absolutely. Yeah. We're tired. Right. Yep. Uh, at the beginning of the of the pandemic, uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but I was bound and determined I was going to do this well. And I did. I mean, nothing stopped me. I wore masks. I distanced. I yelled at people from the street. I nice. made signs. <laughs> I, I did everything I could to stay interacting with people because I was determined we were going to see this through. Um, but it didn't take long that we had to start canceling important events. Mm -hmm. We had to uh, start listening to all the things that were going on in the news about, you know, I don't even want to list it because I still don't know what was true and right. what was just... Yeah, fear-mongering and... Fear, yeah. I mean, and it was, it was scary stuff. It still is scary stuff. You know, if I allow myself to listen to the news for too long, um, I get so confused and my mind, uh, I, I get a headache, you know, because my mind just can't take in any more. Like, I'm just full of the noise. Right. You know, that's a, that's a great, somebody said to me that it's almost like you, somebody gives you all these p puzzle pieces, but none of them are put together. And what you described is that, that feeling that we get when we get that 24 hour news cycle and everything's thrown at us, but none of it can fit together. Yeah. We're actually not designed to live that way. I don't believe that's the way God made us. Yeah. I heard a statement this last week and it said in 15 minutes, of our day, which for a lot of you, that means you haven't even gotten out of bed and you already have more information that you have to process than our grandparents had all day. Sure. Huh. Isn't that scary? Right. And so if we think Wonder that our so minds... Chill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry? Sorry. No wonder they were so chill, right? They didn't uh, have to deal with all yeah, of that Yeah, they didn't have to deal with yeah. all this. And I, I, I'm thinking about some of the people, uh, you know, I, I'm single. So, yes, the isolation was hard for me. Um, but I'm thinking about marrieds, people with kids. Uh, you know, uh, Tim could speak on that. You know, all of a sudden schools are closed or the school right. might be closed. The school might not be closed. Well, so up. maybe you can work tomorrow. Maybe you can't work tomorrow. We actually and had someone in the chat that said it's been a very difficult year to see how hard these restrictions have been on my kids. One disappointment after another. Like, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And, and please, please do not undervalue how hard these disappointments are to constantly absorb and and adapt to. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not to be just brushed away, like, oh, we'll be fine. You know, people aren't fine. We've, we've tried for so long to be fine and put up a brave face and, and, and do all these things that we can. And then I wonder how we as Christians are putting extra pressure on ourselves to right. manage how we're coming across. Right. Things that should be a positive can wear. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that you like? know what? I, I, you know, I had a life motto. Uh, it was fake it till you make it. You that know, was your motto? Seriously? That, that was a life motto. Fake it till you make it. Grin and bear it. Just make it happen. <laughs> okay. I mean, and you can see, you can see that in me. Yep. I, I am, uh, you know, I'm going to make this happen and yep. fake it till yep. you make it. Don't want to miss out on life. Well, let me just make it very clear. I am not living my best life now. This is, this is. <laughs> not this to is quote not, anybody in particular. Not, not, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, you know, you hear this and, and it's like, well, no, no. Like even today, I, I didn't have a great day. And, and I was just like, ah, oh, you know, how, could, how, how come it's so hard? And right now things feel really hard. Uh, last, uh, last June, I found that my position here at Church of the Rock, uh, was being, um, uh, reduced to part-time. And I mean, it, it, it broke my heart, but I couldn't wrap my mind around it. I, I'm a worker. I, I work, 
You know, I, I thought of um, the quote from Beauty and the Beast, you know, one of my all time favorites, you know, life is so unnerving for a servant who's not serving. Mm. And I thought, yep. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you know, thank you, Lemaire. You know, like how could you know, you know exactly what I needed to know? Um, because we've had these things, you know, we, we were passionate about things. There's things that we love to do. Uh, as families, people um, have spent more time together than they know what to do with, but they can't go running off to all their sports events and they can't go running off. And so how do you, how do you work with that? So parents with kids, Yes, it's true. It has been so difficult. It's difficult for the school systems. They don't know whether they can or can't. Um, you know, this is not about evaluating whether our government did a, a good job or not. That's irrelevant. The bottom line is it's been difficult for everyone. Very few people would say that this has right. been fun. Yeah, I, I have a few introvert friends who would say, oh, yeah, I'm in my happy place. I just sit around. But for most people, Tim's <laughs> nodding a little bit. Those, it's yeah. a little bit of Tim. <laughs> hey, Nancy, I, I know that you are way more than just that, but you are also single. And I think there's some real, been some real challenges for singles. Would you mind talking to us a bit about that? Yeah, you know, in order to be a law-abiding citizen, uh, you were, as a single, we were allowed to have one person in our bubble. Um, but even that became so difficult. Right. That's... Uh, because you, you, you wanted to be with people, but I ran out of things to say. What, what do you talk about? Right. Can I take a little poke at you here? <laughs> what? Nancy, you ran out of things to say? <laughs> I know. Seriously? <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows that I could fill up this entire hour without taking a breath. <laughs> If only that wasn't true. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it was so difficult. And, you know, one of the things that this pandemic did is it showed me who I am. Uh, yep. Okay. It showed me my idols. Okay. Yep. Positions. You know, comfort. I love comfort. I love pleasure. But that was, we were cut off from all that. Yeah. You That's know, great. even as a woman, I mean, how long has it been since we've been able to go get our hair cut? Uh, how long has it been since we've been able to, it's, it's summer, I need a pedicure. Like, I know it's vanity, um, <laughs> but how do you, when life is stressful, balance that? Sure. And as a single, I really came to realize that I don't do lonely well. Mm. Yep. I don't do lonely well. And for people whose, whose marriages were stressful, that must have o that could have Absolutely. only have amped up, um, and and in all of this, all of this impacts our mental health, our mental well being, and um, you know just taking a look at that. I, I I had a doctor's appointment, and shockingly enough, they let me come to the office, and I, I sat down, and she's like, "Well, how's life?" I said, "It's hard," and she looks at me, and she says, "It's hard." Or it's hard. <laughs> and I thought, well, it's hard. <laughs> She's like, okay. But I felt so cared for in that moment. Oh, there you go. Okay. Because she was checking out exactly how, how, how much of a toll had this taken on my mental health. Right. And so I thought that that was very good. You know, the summer was difficult. Uh, you know, I, I, I hardly knew, I mean, I, I, I'm guessing everybody lost motivation. You know, there were some people, uh, you know, they, they were taking on new hobbies and people were learning all about sourdough bread making. Right? Do you remember that? Yes, yep. there was a bit of a well, sourdough thing. Did, did you see that meme? Um, if it's on, it's on uh, social media, it's like, if you made it through quarantine without having a kid or adopting a, a, a a puppy, let us know. <laughs> because everyone, everyone did, did those something. Did one of those two things. Wow. They had a kid or they adopted a... a or cat. will be having a kid. Yeah, I there mean, you go. there are a lot of pregnancies out there right now. <laughs> you know, it was so difficult. All the unknowns, all the cancellations. Uh, there was just so much stress that, you know, for the more people you had around you, the more person was reacting and, and dealing with that. I mean, how a lot more people, you know, haven't had their mental health maxed out um, 
you know, we definitely would want to, to be able to have conversations with you. And, and I think that as we move towards serenity, I know that for me, these last eight years, that serenity prayer has been a lifeline. Okay. Uh, because even now, although it feels like things are opening up, we really can only live one day at a time. Right. And I think that that part, that part is, is so good. It's With really, all, can I just jump in there and answer? It's really interesting that uh, and people have said this who, when that have opened up already, they said that there was that sense of, oh, if only you can get to opening up, right? Yeah. And then that's the big pie in the sky, but it actually hasn't made everything, amazingly, hasn't made everything all perfect and all put together because it really is those things that the serenity prayer talks about it. That's real life yeah. and real serenity, yeah. not looking for that next big thing. Yeah. So that, that's a great thought. Yeah, and you know, uh, I remember very, very clearly how God one day spoke to me because in my, uh, in my lament, in my heartbreak, uh, you know, I went to the book of Psalms because if anybody knew heartache and heartbreak, it was King David. Right. And so I found a lot of um, validation actually in, in that Psalm in the Psalms. And uh, I remember very clearly one day God said to me, nothing can happen to you without my approval. That anything that was happening to me, God was aware of and he was choosing to allow it. Okay. And you know, for anybody that's been part of a 12 step program, you know that step two, step two is, I believe that God exists, that he cares about me. Right. And that he has the power to help me. Hey, that's a, Nancy, that's a, I just want to jump on that. That's a great thought. In the chat, folks, put in there what it is that God has spoken to you over this last 15 months. I think those are going to be words of encouragement. That's a great thought that Nancy just shared. Uh, put in those, and, and Tim, as they come in, why don't you, would you put, them, put them out to us? Sure. Because what, those are, the, those are the gold in our life. It isn't how I feel or my thought process so much. It's what is God saying to me, right? And then he, he says it, and then he takes us down, I think, um, takes us down into the valley and beats us into shape so we can get the vision that we saw on the mountain. I'm quoting somebody and I can't remember who I'm quoting, but uh, I mean, that, that's that sense of it, right? Is we get the picture, and then God helps us to become that thing and to really get that thing that you said. So on the chat, folks, what is it that God's spoken to you? Great, Nance. Yeah, and as we wait for some of those responses, you know, I want to remind you that the whole piece of mental health is um, looking at how are we coping with the pressures of life, the changes, the losses, the chaos, the, we're always one event away from life change. Mm -hmm. And this pandemic has just kind of amped that up and made it multiple. Right. right. So taking a look at how we cope is a big deal. Right. Mm -hmm. Some things God has said to people, patience, go outside, slow down. You are enough for me. Wow. I got you. Okay. Find and see joy in every day. God's relationship with me is not contingent on what I'm doing for him. Don't forget that I'm with you and will always will be. He wants me to search him, know that he loves me. Wow, those are great, eh? So good. I mean, I really feel like that, that our audience is obviously relating to uh, this journey that, that we can concur with in that we need God, you know, because here we are looking at how are we going to cope with this? How are we going to in, inter, interwine, you know, bring in our faith as we do this? Because we can't just be like, oh, happy, happy, you know, because right. that's not authentic Christianity. You know, we're not going to be appealing to the non-believers if we're not being truthful to ourselves. Right. So, Nance, how have you, I know that you've, at least I know your journey, you've tried to be really intentional about putting the serenity pair into practice. And I know this is a little bit of next week, so I won't get, you don't steal all of your thunder, but what are some of the ways, like somebody, that slow down that somebody said on the chat, you know, huge. And I know you've done that. Mm -hmm. You've been intentional about some of those things. How have you been intentional about some of those things? What have you done? What, what's, what's worked for you? Yeah, well, I think a lot of the things, you know, I mean, the first line of the serenity prayer is, you know, um, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And I, I probably revisit that every day 
because I am trying to make things work that aren't actually meant for me to make work or aren't actually even meant to work. And so, you know, if I am so busy trying to make, change something that's not mine, I'm gonna ram myself down into the ground. Right. And so that alone is huge. Am I going to work at accepting the things that I cannot change? Right. And there's a lot about this pandemic we cannot change. That list is long, right? I mean, wow. you, you can just hear it in everybody's words. Like, yeah. you know, fake news, you know, it's a hoax, vaccine, no vaccine, you know, freedom marches. Like, people are not accepting certain things. Yeah. And it just causes chaos. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, that, that first phrase for me, and, and I'm focusing more on the second half in this season of that, that prayer for myself, but that whole, uh, the ability to accept, accept those things that I can't change, I, that's sort of been a life deal for me. Mm -hmm. uh, early on, um, I had a, a mentor who said to me, if you can get that one thing, you're gonna actually be okay. And I always love it when people say stuff like that because it makes it simple, right? Because I'm a simple guy, just give me a simple thing mm -hmm. and I'll make it And just being able to say, okay, God, uh, and the version that I like is give me the courage mm -hmm. to accept. Because it takes a lot of courage to, because that means I'm really giving it to God, right? And say, as I, and really when it comes down to it, how much of those things can I actually change? There's always some. Mm -hmm. I do have some things, but it, it is, it's a huge challenge. Anything else, Nancy, you want to Well, you know what, or? I think, I, I, I know I've been taking up a lot of time, and I just want to say the one, the one thing, the one big thing that I have learned uh, through this pandemic, and that is number one, God needs to be number one. Hmm. Whatever happens around me, I need to be prepared to let that go because God is the one. God is my shield. God is my refuge. God has a good plan for my life, plan for hope and a future. Do I believe that? Uh, and I also realize that I have entered into a season of waiting. Um, I think we're all waiting, but you know, yeah. None of you are good waiters either. I mean, we're like, <laughs> what are you yeah, saying? done, done yeah. waiting. You know, you're yeah. like, let's snap, snap to it. But we are in a season of waiting. And in my most desperate times, um, you know what? I, I would go to the word. I would cry out to God. I would even go to Google. Who knew? Uh, and just type in whatever I was struggling with that I was feeling crushed or, you know, just right. other sermons. And, and I came across this sermon called Didn't See That Coming. And I'm like, you betcha, you know, because it's like when we, we were, we've been blindsided. Absolutely. Like none of us planned this. None of us were wanting this. None of us were prepared for this. Um, but, but as Christians, as believers, followers of Jesus, um, we have to choose to believe. We have to choose that we're going to surrender to God and wait on God to open up the opportunities. Right. You know, and uh, there's just some great songs, Wait On You, you know. Right. I found uh, this scripture, um, Isaiah, 50, Isaiah 30 has been one of my favorites, mostly because there was a, um, a scripture on my grandmother's wall that said, in quietness and trust is your strength. Hmm. And I've often meditated on that. So quiet, trust, mm, you know, uh, very hard for me to do. Uh, but then I discovered, uh, moving on to verse 18, it says, so the Lord must wait for me to come to him so that he can show his love and compassion. And I thought, yes, yes, that's exactly what's happening. You know, as I go to God, who's already waiting for me, he's going to show me his love and compassion for the Lord is a faithful God. And here's a promise. Blessed are those who wait for his help. It's hard to do. It's hard to wait. But God has been faithful. I have seen him do amazing things. So that's my testimony is I'm going to keep waiting. And while I'm waiting, I'll be praising, not complaining, but praising. <laughs> I like it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. That was, that was really great. What we asked Nancy to talk about and, and kind of frame for us is the whole place of, you know what, we're struggling and it's okay to be struggling and, and not just kind of jump. And some of you are thinking, well, yeah, but where's the answer? 
right? I want to give me the answer, right? Figure, fill in the blank for me here. But the reality is we do need to be in that place where we understand that it's okay to struggle, it's okay to work through things because those instant quick things don't always come. And when you get into that, I have to have it fixed now thing, Boy, that's trouble. You get so disappointed. Tim, any qu comments or questions? Yeah, we have one question here. Uh, how do you stop yourself from blaming God when everything is the way that it is? Well, number one, God's got strong shoulders. But if you're blaming, you're angry. If you're blaming, you're trying to control. If you're blaming, you're trying to escape your pain. Mm, that's good. And that pain is real. And so whoever wrote that, I just want to say to you, your pain is real. And I can appreciate that. I can, you know, totally validate that. Um, but then there's this key piece in the Christian walk uh, called forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. And if you feel like God has wronged you, you still need to forgive. And, and that can really be difficult. I cried out, God, why have you done this? Why have you allowed this to happen? That is a real human response. Right. And so first, I, I definitely want to validate that. Um, and if you're blaming, um, my, my concern for you is, is that you're going to get stuck there. Right. That's really and, good, and, right. and my heart hurts for you. And so um, if you're stuck there, I would want you to uh, have a conversation with somebody who you trust, somebody that would want to hear you out and then kind of guide you on a journey where you'll be able to process that. Uh, because otherwise uh, it turns into offense. Right. That's and that's the biggest trap. Right. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think I think that's great. Nancy. At the end of the day, th we have to go through those steps, though. We can't just skip the like David doesn't skip in the Psalms that he's mad and he's frustrated. And if you read David, it's it's amazing in the Psalms where you can actually chart him as he's going around. And he's but he always comes out of that place because he focuses on God and he says, God, I'm going to choose to surrender. Mm. And for me, the whole thing is. I, I need to choose surrender in my life. I, yes, I can go through the frustration. Yes, I do that. And I need to sometimes talk to people and they go, mm, yeah, that's a bad life strategy, right? To just stay there. It's okay to be there, but just don't stay there. Mm -hmm. I love that, Nancy. Yeah. Matt, if, if, if I would I'd just jump in there too. Um, this is a l little bit uh, off topic, but you'll see how it, it, it works. I was thinking about about atheists, how they they uh, don't believe in God. And often when we talk about free will, we think of, you know, we have the free will to, to believe in God or not. And I thought if that was, that's interesting if that was true, but the more I looked at the universe and the more I looked at um, just how our bodies work and biology, you realize there's things that scientists are astounded by. They're in awe and wonder of. Mm. And I wonder if free will maybe looks a little bit different. Instead of believing in God or not, which I think actually is pretty easy to believe in God. Most people believe in God. Yeah. I think the free will is do we choose to love him or not? Right. That's, that's our free will. Because when we start getting blaming God, you know, we'll, uh, are we going to choose? Are we going to choose to love him? Are we going to remember his character? Mm -hmm. And so I think right. that's, uh, that's a piece I just wanted to. Th those, are, those are great thoughts. Yeah, Tim? Uh, another question here, different topic. Um, yeah. Having seen your parents that you can't get to and they don't understand all of this, how do you answer them about the lack of family being with them? Yeah, and you know, I, I, I spend time right now as an essential worker in care facilities and, and these people are hurting. Uh, they, they are confused. They, they don't know um, how it's going to work. Um, and, and this is part of that waiting. Uh, waiting on God to say, God, you know, how can we move forward? And and we, we work really hard to be creative in right. reaching out to them. Uh, I know that the care facilities are doing their best as well. Um, but because of the virus, uh, nobody actually knows. And, you know, it's it's a real risk and everybody's is doing their part. But but the pain is real. We're going back to that piece. The, the pain of this is real. And to try to figure these things out on our own uh, is, is going to not just give you a headache, but also a migraine and is going to tax 
your your mind to a, a really harmful place. Yeah, and I, I think as you're talking to to parents and, and like whoever it is, right? Um, there isn't necessarily an emotionally satisfying answer to no. that question. And and I think when it, and I think this is a good life thing. If I try to expect an emotionally satisfying answer for every question that I'm going to ask, I'm going to be bitterly disappointed. Sometimes there's a conversation you say, well, this is the best that we can do right now. And the being creative part is, is, a, is a great way of, of walking through that. Um, sometimes, and this is going to, depending on the situation, sometimes creatively changing the subject and thinking about the, the good things that I'm thankful for and focusing on God, because there's no good answer to that question. It just sucks. Yeah. Right? I haven't seen my mom for so long. I talk to my mom every Sunday, and I'm thinking, like, oh, for Pete's sake. And then the fourth, third wave hit, and I'm thinking, oh, gee, are mm -hmm. you kidding me? <laughs> I can't do this. And so um, getting over the fact that I can't fix everything, things that I can't change, and getting to the place of saying, okay, well, what can I do? Yeah. I can call my mom every Sunday, and we can talk about stuff, and we can say, yeah, we really wish that we could do this, and not try to fix it but look forward to the things that we can do. Good, all right. Hey, Matt, I, I was thinking about this. We have a cron, a ham, a brawn, and we, we got to give him some other name, like <laughs> Matt Penner, maybe. Penner, yeah, Penner. I was gonna, so he would like <laughs> fit in. Phrase, <laughs> phrase, <laughs> phrase or freeze it. Fre <laughs> Matt Freezen, yes. <laughs> Matt yeah. Falk, if he's any uh, funny. He's not funny uh, enough. I'm not as funny as Matt. No, he's not funny as not Matt Falk. So, Matt, yeah. why, don't, why don't you take a little time? What, what happened to you when the lockdown hit? We're going to have yeah. time to talk about that. Great. Uh, thanks for asking me that. Um, you know, uh, one, one of the things uh, before I launch into that, if, if you're on the chat right now, we'd like to know what happened to you when the lockdown hit, how, how that went for you. Um, and so as you're answering that, uh, I'll answer uh, for me. And one thing you got to know about me is I'm actually a deeply insecure person. And I may come across as confident, but <laughs> actually I'm, I'm not. And one of, the, one of these lies that um, I feel like I struggle with to this day, even though um, there's some real biblical truth to, to fight against this lie, it's just it's something I, I, I have to struggle with day by day. But that lie is this, that I am deeply unvaluable, that really I'm just like dirt. And if, if I was just myself um, and people just saw me exactly who I was, they wouldn't be interested in me. They wouldn't want to talk to me. They wouldn't want to be my friend. They wouldn't, you know, want to love me. So essentially, that's sort of this basis that um, a lot of my, my behavior comes from. So it's like, okay, so I look to culture for cues to see what would make me more valuable. You know, so I got to make sure, okay, um, the culture likes when you present well. Okay, so I got to make sure I'm articulate or I seem smart right. um, or maybe I should work out more and, uh, look, you know, right. look more attractive or that's what he should do. Work that's out right. More. Yeah. Your arms, Matt, not big enough. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, right. You, you, it's like, you know, you, you see exhibit A, you know, right here. Yep. And, and then, like, oh, you know, people like musicians. So uh, I know I'm a little bit musical. Let me dabble in this and that. And, right. and as you can see, with every cue I pick up. Uh, from culture, it's I'm wrapping this, what I think, this piece of dirt uh, of myself, just so someone will say, hey, that's valuable, I'll, I'll pick it up. And when, when the lockdown hit, and so that's not a sustainable thing, by the right. way. It's yeah. not sustain uh, sustainable. Uh, but when the lockdown hit, it attacked every part of, of uh, the things that I did to try to make myself look good or look valuable, right. you know? So my barometers are like, okay, if I look good, you know, I'm going to the gym. Oh, I can't go to the gym anymore. Okay, well, if I'm doing successful at youth ministry and we have students coming in and, you know, encountering yeah. the Lord and uh, having their lives change. Oh, that's not happening either. Oh, the people on the Zoom, my students don't like coming to Zoom. Oh, guess what? It's even worse. My leaders don't even want to come to Zoom. Oh, actually, it's even worse. I don't even want to go to Zoom. <laughs> like, is <laughs> We've had a lot of I'm tired of Zoom in the chat yeah. too. So. <laughs> yeah, so it's just this, it, it's just this crumbling of, of all the, the, the things that aren't sustainable that I was holding. Right. And so it was just horrible. Right. I just put it like, it was just horrible. 
Right. I, I really appreciate the honesty in that mm -hmm. because we all go to the Bible. Uh, there's in Isaiah talks about broken cisterns, stuff that just pours right through. All of us have those things. Matt, I so appreciate that. If you could go back in time to before the beginning of the pandemic, what would you say to yourself? Yeah. Um, well, I would say a few things. And what I realized was when the pandemic hit, I wasn't doing things that I found meaningful. I was just doing what was ex sort of expected of me by, you know, my work, by work or by other people. Okay. And that those meaningful actions that I, I engaged in throughout my week, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to do that. And then I also um, started to forget my support systems. So, you know, I didn't call up my best friends like you did. I, did, I didn't... Um, you know, spend time with the Lord as much as I should have. You know, all these support systems right. that were put in place. And I, and I didn't have enough grace for myself okay. when failures happened. That's huge, eh? Yeah. Yeah. And so there's this, there's this thing as leaders, some, some of us are delusional, delusional enough to believe that it doesn't matter what the obstacle is, we're going to overcome it. We're right. not going to... We're not gonna um, the, the ground. We're not gonna let any ground, you know, retreat. Absolutely. We're not gonna retreat from the ground. We're just gonna either keep it there or even advance. Yeah. But there was so much ground being lost, and again, going back to my value, saying, "Okay, ground's being lost. I have no value," and so I didn't have enough grace and re being realistic of of the, the the struggle that we were actually going through as a church, as a youth ministry. Right. Um, and so what I, what I had to figure out I, uh, is finding new ways to do meaningful things. All the meaningful things that I, that I was doing okay. or that I couldn't do anymore, I had to find creative ways to start doing meaningful things again. And so it has to look different and I have to go on this discovery. That's what I would say to myself. And I also say, do the opposite of what you're feeling. So I think a lot of us felt this way. As soon as the lockdown hit, you were like, okay, let's just go into hibernation mode and wake me up when all of this is over. Mm. Right. I don't know if you've if you felt that yeah. or you felt that uh, on the chat. I was just like, you know, this would be just a great time to go on vacation and <laughs> you let yeah. someone else deal with, deal with the issues. And what I realized is I needed to do the opposite thing. And I often encourage people to go on fasts and fast can look really different uh, depending on the person. Um, a lot of people like uh, food fasts, but for me specifically, uh, media fasts are excellent because okay. I fill my soul with junk, right? I fill my soul with video right. games, Netflix, uh, with what's on sale on Amazon, uh, you know, what's, you know, what's, I, f I fill it with junk. And so by the time I, I sit down to hang out with Jesus, my heart is full. Mm. Oh, that's right. Good. Yeah. And, and there's, there's a song that says, let every heart prepare him room. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, it's because your heart is full of stuff. And then when, when Jesus comes into your heart and wants to, and to enjoy you, and you want to enjoy him and, and he wants to enjoy you, he needs a place to sit, right? And, that's and, good, Matt. I love that. Yeah. And so, and so um, I really encourage people to think of, instead of ramping down, the, the spiritualism in their life and just going like, I'm just going to take a vacation from this, hibernate from it. How do I double down into how do, how do I sink in, uh, and lean on in God all the more? And I think I would say to myself, the, the more stressed out you are, the more you have to, you have to double down on this discipline. When you get to the end of yourself, you'll, you'll find God. And I went through uh, a bit of a burnout season a couple of years ago, and, and God really encouraged me to, uh, to, to go on, on this media fast. Mm -hmm. And it was incredible. I've never had a period of time where I was in worship and experienced Jesus as powerfully as I did then. This is going to be really weird, and uh, I'm going to share it anyways. Nice. But if you, if you look at, you know, uh, people, uh, little kids who play video games, okay? You'll see that they enjoy the game so much and you can tell they need to go to the bathroom because they, <laughs> they start doing this, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and they just enjoy the game so much that they're waiting for the very last second, to, <laughs> in, you know, in order to pause the game to go to the bathroom. My time with Jesus in those moments was like, was like that. 
was like, I, I just didn't, I knew I had to do something, I knew I had to, but I, I just wanted to stay in his presence. And so, um, so I, I, would, I would suggest to myself to go on a fast of some kind. And okay. the last thing I would say to myself was to remember my calling. And uh, it's easy, it was easy to look at Zoom and youth ministry and see that it's not really doing all that much. There's no real sense of fruit and, and thinking like, why, why should I even do this? And I would just go back to when I was 18 years old and I was in a backyard of the, the youth pastor at the time. He, he, did, he talked about his vision and he, and he said one thing that I'll never forget. And he said, I don't want a single kid to walk through those doors without hearing about the love of Jesus. As soon as he said that, it was like, imagine yourself being this massive church bell and someone came with, you know, a stick and whacked you. And you just like, whoa. I'm going to give my life to this. And I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I didn't know if I was going to come on staff here. I didn't know if, you know, I was just going to be a volunteer or whatever. But I knew in my heart of hearts that God was calling me. And he called me then. And, and so those are the things I would have told myself because that, that would have gave me a lot of perspective. Okay, that's great. Hey, on the chat, why don't you ask people to write down, um, what would they tell themselves? We've actually asked You've been that doing already. that? Yeah. You're like way so, ahead of me, man. <laughs> yeah. Are you, so, you got any responses there? A couple of responses. Okay, cool. Someone said, I would just say, don't worry, God's got you. Okay. Uh, people are really resonating with the media fast thing and are saying if they could go back, they would ah. do a little more of that. Um, Isaac, our audio tech, said, I would invest in plywood. Not really helpful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then he said, oh, also invest in relationships. Also oh, I, I, he covered himself off yeah, a little yeah. bit. There. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's what we got so far. Yeah. Okay. You know, one of the things that, I, that he said that, that resonated with me, because I did this pretty early when I realized that I could not control this. And I decided to respond to others and myself. Myself was the hardest challenge with grace and kindness. Be kind to yourself. Yeah, because oh, I wasn't beautiful. gonna yeah. come out of this with a brand new mansion built or a, learned a yeah. new language or mastered sourdough bread, right. you know? And so to be kind, we have all these expectations. Um, yeah. And I think that, that that was really good when you That's were super saying, helpful. Where does Inve grace could also, in? sorry, could also invest in Bitcoin, in Zoom, yeah. <laughs> those other things. Yeah, those, are, yeah, those, are, <laughs> those are super unhelpful. Yeah. Um, Matt, it, last question to you. So where did you see God working in your life? You know, um, it was actually, a, it's what Nancy said actually a little bit earlier on. I, I saw how much I wasn't like Jesus. I, I realized that I didn't love my leaders as much as I should. I didn't love um, my fiance as much as I should. I didn't love the youth as much as I should. It, it really showed me that um, that what I was doing was just not sustainable. Mm. Okay. And God really, in, the, in these moments where we are going through trials and tribulations, it, it's, God is so good because he actually shows you, okay, you're feeling bad, this is not working, but you know, that, that contrasts the, God, the godly way, right? When you, when you feel like you wanna blame God, you know that's not godly, right. but, but then the godly way is, is lifted up with that contrast. It's like, okay, if I want to blame, what do I need to, what do I need to do? I need to forgive. I need to d dive deeper into God's character. So all these, these negative, um, rebellious, sinful emotions that I, that I had and still have, by the way, um, it highlights to me, okay, I'm not like Jesus. I need to be more like him. Here's an area that I need to grow in. And by the grace of God, I have been growing in them. But I think just, just a, a simple way of putting it, and I'll just end it here, um, is that I really felt like God was saying, I'm more interested in turning you into more, turning, to, turning you into be more like Jesus right. than I'm interested in giving you what you want. Mm -hmm. That's the ultimate goal. If right. you're more like Jesus, you'll be more joyful. If you're more like Jesus, you'll be able to love people better. If, if, if you're more like Jesus, you'll be more successful in your calling and your ministry. Right. So that, that promise to me was, um, was invaluable. Yeah, I, and folks, as we talk about this, we can say what, you know, if I could go back now, go back in time, we clearly can't, but we can start it now. 
So it's now is we always have now and we choose now to do those things. That's that's absolutely great. And my last question to you was going to be before you put the little comment in there. So now you have no issues and you're perfect, right? I'm perfect. That's I <laughs> think I'm there's I have no faults. I'm that's the right. most humblest person you'll ever huh. meet. We'll Typical youth pastor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I, I mess up all the time. All the time. Amen to that. We're, we see that in the office, Matt. We know. Uh, go ahead, Tim. Well, we have a couple questions here. Um, what would you say to people who are going through the toughest season of their life entirely apart from pandemic issues? Well, life has continued, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. not all of our problems are, are based on, on, on the pandemic. Uh, things are things are tough. I mean, everything has gotten more expensive, so finances are more difficult to manage. Uh, kids, uh, w well, where life is going to go for them, we don't know yet either. Um, you know, and and people have gotten ill, yeah. not with COVID, but other illnesses. Uh, life has has really, it that that is definitely true. And, but I think, you know, if there's anything that we want to, to reiterate is, um, and, you know, Matt said the same thing, like, we have got to get lined up with Jesus, realizing that we cannot control everything. We cannot escape life without difficulties. You know, we, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love comfort. I love pleasure. Uh, and, and I didn't get to have any of those kinds of things. And so it really tested me. Am I going to be a woman of faith? Am I going to believe that God is leading me? Is That God is in, in charge? Am I ready to let that go and let God, oh, cliche, sorry. We said we weren't going to do that. Yeah, but well. it is true. Like, am I going to let God be God? And I'm, uh, am I going to surrender and serve him? Yeah. And, and I think at the end, the end of it too, I think in North America, we've struggled with a really terrible theology of suffering. Mm -hmm. Is that, you know, part of the serenity prayer is that, that suffering is actually a pathway. Yes. And, and I think that pathway, we, we I hate it. Yes. <laughs> I gotta be honest, right? I, will, I want happy and good. But, that, but learning to come to that pathway and understanding that in the middle of whatever that person is going through, God will meet you in that pathway. His promises are still true. And uh, that pathway of suffering actually leads us to places that we could never get and we could never experience uh, in any other way. And so not to try to get past it or get, get you know, over it or get through it, but live in it. Yeah. God's there in the middle of it. Yeah. And in fact, he allowed it to happen. So he's got good things too. Yeah. One more question. Sure. We talked a little bit about this, but someone asked, what steps can a person take to have a more positive mindset? Okay. Matt, you want to grab that? Yeah, you know, um, there's, uh, that is, that's a lot of, there's, there's no magic bullet right. to this. Um, and I, I think, I, are we allowed to, are we allowed to plug books at all? Sure. <laughs> Craig, uh, Craig Rochelle has, uh, the, I think it's a book, uh, something to the effect of the bat, uh, winning the battle in, of, in your mind. Yeah. Uh, and these are um, incredible uh, resources for you. Uh, also, uh, a guy Fighting named... the war in your mind, I think. Is when, yeah, yeah, something to that. Yeah, you, you got it, right? Um, there's another... Um, there's another book too that uh, another person actually I think would be also a good per person to look at is, is a guy named Dr. Ammon. He's he's been a part of uh, Saddleback, Rick Warren with the whole Daniel plan. He look he also has just uh, written a book recently about um, having to you know what what do you, what do you how do you battle with these negative thoughts in your mind? And again, I, I, can, I there's, there is no magic bullet other than you have to put in the work. Other than you, the things that you do that don't seem like working, if you do it enough, it, they're small deposits over time. Mental health is just like any other health. If you go to the gym one, uh, you know, one, once a, a year, your, your health will be, your, will be no good. But if you go to the gym regularly, you're putting small deposits into your body. And it's the same thing with your brain, small deposits, little things throughout your day, um, the habits you develop that may seem insignificant at the time, but over a duration of time, um, it, it actually, uh, it's huge, it's huge. And, and just an illustration, you would never 
I don't know if you guys floss your teeth, but whenever I go to the <laughs> go to the dentist, they're like, you should floss your teeth more. How how ridiculous would it be if I, instead of flossing my teeth all throughout the year, just took you know, six hours to flush, uh, f floss my teeth the night before and like make up for that, that spare time. It makes no sense. It's the, sa it's the same thing with mental health and physical health. That's great. Hey, we're, I'm gonna just jump in and I have a, a few quick thoughts and then I wanna lead you into to something. The, there has been, um, in, in my journey in this, that early on I, I had a sense of, I, I can't go down and get discouraged because I talked about my dad and, and he was down. And if I do that, then I'm going to get down. And, and, and God really worked with me. And, and I, I think what he, he did, and this has been so helpful for me in the way I help with people, is he put his finger on a lie that I was believing. Mm -hmm. And all of you have said that. And the lie for me was, if I go down, I'm going to be my dad. Mm -hmm. I will be my father. And, and God quietly and slowly and gently got me to the place where I could hear that truth. And he is doing this in your life. He is working in your life and he is so amazing. The Holy Spirit is continually at work with the people around you, the circumstances all bringing you to the place because God loves you. He wants to change you and he wants to help you understand the things that are unhelpful to your, your mental well-being, to your emotional well-being. And he's not actually looking and waving his finger at you. You can be kind to yourself. I love that kindness, guys. God is so kind to us. Us, and you can be kind to yourself, go at it, keep doing those things, but understand that, that he is on this journey to help you put his, your finger on those things you're believing that are unhelpful to you, so you can grab a hold of the things that are helpful. And, and as I change from that, I can't be down because then if I'm down, you know, to going to say, you know what, I really, he led me the opposite of that is he led me to say, you know what, you need to look at your identity, the whole little bit of what Matt said, you know, the whole dirt thing, right? And, and um, I didn't actually have that problem, I had the opposite problem. I thought I was awesome, right? Who would have known that that wasn't true? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not. Ask my wife. <laughs> actually, you're on staff. You guys know this, <laughs> right? Is, is that, you know, because I'm an optimist and I'm positive and I see all of these things and I think it's going to be great all the time. And, you know, my wife says, I experience everything three times. I think about how awesome it's going to be. I experience it and it's awesome. And then I think, and then I think about how it was awesome, right? Which seems all really good, except it leads you to that place that I'm focusing on my stuff and what I can do and not on God and what he's doing in my life. Mm. And he sort of took me away to say, you know, your identity can't be rooted in what you are because all of that was actually a facade. It wasn't actually real. It's part of my personality, but it's not meant to be the core of who I am. The core of who I am needs to come out of that, that sense of, you know what, God really is my source and my strength. And so he, he pulled away the lie and he gave me some truth. That was one of the big things that in my own thing. And the second thing I want to talk to you about, and this is in this season especially, is, is mindfulness. And uh, that, that's the word that I want to use, is that I need to be mindful about my emotions, I need to be mindful about my thoughts, and I need to be mindful about God. And uh, my emotions can go too high because, but then they go too low. And I had to learn how to go like this and just make everything not flat, but not try to get so much out of life because then I'm looking for life to solve things for me, not for God to solve things for me. And, and that's, and for some of us, I know that's, that's huge. Um, and my thoughts in being mindful of my thoughts is that I can't believe everything and assume everything that I think is right. I have terrible thoughts. And those thoughts are something that I don't have to own them as mine or take them as part of my identity or any of those things. I need to be mindful of my thoughts mm -hmm. and evaluate them to say, yeah, you know what, that's not actually even true. I, didn't, I don't think that, I'm not that, so it's not an identity thing. I just put it away. I don't even bother thinking about it anymore. Because if you believe everything you think about yourself, wow, are you in trouble, right? And if you take it on as your piece, I think that's, um, that's incredibly important over this time. I've, I've kind of focused in a little bit more on that. And the whole idea about being mindful about God was sort of the last thing that I did. And, and that is really mindful about the bigger reward. 
Mm. The last part of the serenity prayer is, is, was a part that I actually kind of hate, right? Oh. <laughs> because I would like to do it the other way. Because uh, the last part of the serenity prayer is that I can be supremely happy forever with you. But that means then the other, the first part of that is that I can be like reasonably happy now. And I would like to be supremely happy all the time, right? That's the way I want my life to work. That's that optimist crazy thing that I got going on, right? And uh, God's saying, yeah, yeah, just bring that down because you live in a broken world. There's disappointment. And wow, has this pandemic done that to us where we've just realized that there's, and, and I began to think, and this is a little bit of the answer to that lady's, that person's question of what, how do I become by bringing it down, by saying, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to live for that bigger reward. I'm not, and I'm still going to be reasonably happy. I'm still going to get lots of good things now, but that's actually not the point. I'm not living for the moment. I'm living in the moment. That's, that's a bit of my mantra that I've kind of grabbed a hold of. And uh, as I've thought about those things, those things have, over the pandemic, have become really significant to me. And, and I've always, this is maybe the, the least serious part of that. And, and as I've realized it, I realized that, uh, my wife, very content during this time. My job was to make her life less content. <laughs> <laughs> Just being around and hassling her and, and being, you know, that little puppy that runs around, hey, how you doing now? What are you doing now? Let's go. Hey, you want to go do this? You want to go do that? And that was sort of my job, to <laughs> make her life less content. <laughs> and uh, that we all respond to life differently. Mm -hmm. And with the personalities that God has given us, uh, we actually can get things from other people. I get stuff from Eileen. She gets stuff from me. I get stuff from Nancy and from Matt and from Tim. And all of us can get things from each other and we need to reach out. I, I, folks, I started this at the beginning. I'm saying, hey, remember my dad and he wasn't able to reach out and wasn't able to access stuff. I hope this conversation has helped you say, hey, listen, there's a whole bunch of different ways and different people and, and different pieces that we can begin to draw from. And it's okay to struggle. Mm -hmm. That's where we started. Uh, you know, Matt led us in, in some of those things of saying, hey, listen, I, I can grab a hold of some things here. That, that they're true. And, and I, I love the transparency that he said, hey, listen, I I'm, I'm really have to deal with this. And all of us have things we have to deal with. Uh, but all of us, as you heard this conversation, we're all moving toward God and saying, God, you know what? We actually need to get that answer from you. Yeah. Life is not going to give us that answer. So here's how I want to end our time. Uh, I want to have you close your eyes and however you focus on God. And I'm going to read a Psalm to you that is super familiar. And, and as you hear this Psalm, uh, I want you to just open yourself up to what God wants to say to you. Because I, I believe that in this time, we're, we can, we're either going to close the time by having words for people, but we're, we're going to do it this way. We're going to let God speak to you. Mm -hmm. And in these words, I'm going to read it super slow. Uh, I want you to just hear what it is. Some word is going to pop out. A picture is going to pop into your head or something like that that is going to help you with that emotional, mental health and this is God's word for you, okay? Let's pray together. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
Here's what I want you to do. I want you to keep in an attitude of worship and I want you to type into the chat what phrase or word or picture God gave you as I was reading that. Because that was God's word to you tonight. We've talked about a lot of things, but God had a word for you. For me, it was, I lack nothing. Mm. Sometimes I think I lack stuff. God said to me today, you don't lack anything. Thank you, God. Man, that's, that's just soothing to my soul. Okay, we'll take a minute and, and uh, just write those things in the chat. Matt, what popped out for you? That line of you, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. I want to, I want to avoid my enemies. I don't want anything to right. do with them. Right. I'd rather hang out with the godly people. Right. But to know that God is with me and not only is he with me, that he's actually prepared a place, a, a table in front of my enemies. It's kind of, uh, it's very uh, cool. It's, yeah. Nance, what jumped out for you? Uh, today was he leads me. Okay in that even though it looks like everything is chaos and crumbling very quickly, God, God is still leading me. Right. So. Yeah. Hey, friends, as whatever, whatever jumped out for you, whatever that is, uh, I hope you take this. And I, and I hope you take from today that it's all right to struggle. It's okay to be where you're at. There is, there is hope that you have. There is, uh, there, there's some things that God has for you and we need to do this together. And we can do this together as a church and we can provide uh, this as a church family. I wanna invite you to two things next week. Uh, we're gonna go actually unpack the serenity prayer and have the how-tos happen. And Nancy's gonna be leading us through the really practical how-tos of that. Uh, we have the week after that, starting on Thursdays, eight choices that you can make to really change your life. They're, it's called Life's Healing Choices and it's the basis, right? Uh, of Celebrate Recovery, and you're gonna, we can have that going on, on Zoom. <coughs> I won't say that quietly, but it's gonna be a, an opportunity for you to look at the different choices that you have that you can make in your life to make that happen. And we're really excited about this, and really we see this as just a launching point for the conversation for us to move forward into health and in the way that God wants us to do this together. Tim, what's happening on the platform in this next little while? What can people be a part of? Yeah, as Pastor Robbie said, next Thursday is going to be over Zoom. I know we can, there is good that can come out of Zoom. <laughs> so go to churchtherock.ca slash serenity to sign up and get the link for that. And the following Thursdays will be on Zoom as well. On churchtherock.live, there's always lots happening. Of course, we got our weekend services Saturday and Sunday. We're still live online. Make sure you come join us, jump in the chat. Monday night is online small group. We're going through the summer. That's Mondays at 8.30. We just finished a series on Psalm 23. Really? And we're actually wow. going into another series, digging deeper on that specific part about God being in the presence of my enemies. And so that's Monday nights. Next Tuesday, Power and Praise, 7.30 p.m., Church of the Rock dot live. You won't want to miss it. It's always an exciting time of worship and experiencing God's power. If you have questions, go to Church of the Rock dot live. You can click on the schedule tab and see what's coming up. All right. Thanks for joining us, friends. God bless you.